Hey everyone, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com and welcome to this full free video drum lesson where I'm going to show you how to play that really cool drum solo intro from the song War Pigs by Black Sabbath, drummed of course by Bill Ward. You can get the free PDF transcription for this drum solo from my website. You'll find a link beneath this video where you can go download the PDF for free. And then while you're there at my website, you might also want to consider signing up to become an online member. Really what I do these lessons for is to promote um, drumsaword.com, which is basically a website which uh, offers you full video song lessons, teaching you songs from start to finish. Um, and I've currently almost got about 300 full song lessons up there. Uh, and for a $97 for a year subscription, you gain instant online access to all those materials, plus hundreds of freebies I give you, plus eBooks. And, uh, and uh, over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. So I've got loads and loads of cool stuff over at the website you might want to check out. Click on the How It Works button if you're interested, but also go over and make sure you get this free PDF downloaded. So let's crack on with the lesson. There's the advert out of the way. We've got um, quite a long um, uh, piece of transcription here. The song starts, I could have started it um, uh, on the second line where the drum solo really sort of starts, but it's this cool little drum fill which Bill comes in with before the final set of hi-hat steps, which I thought I'd include. So the first bar shows that drum fill. We start on beat one, we've got one and. By the way, this transcription starts at one minute 37 and the tempo is 89 BPM, so quite slow. We've got one and two and three and four and. So back to the that first drum fill, we get one and, two, E and, uh. So we've got the one and, fair enough. And by the way, I've transcribed this um, uh, solo for just two toms. I'm sure Bill has more toms than that, uh, but it's not really important that you, you, you mess around with the toms too much. Either it's a high tom or it's a low tom, but feel free to improvise with your own tom set up. For example, instead of playing one and, you might want to play one and. It doesn't really matter which tom you use. So we get the one and, and then we get beat two rested, two E, so we're coming with that snare drum, that next snare drum on the E of two, which is a bit weird, two E and uh, and that bass drum there falls on the uh, two E and uh, so two off beat, if you like, 16th notes there. Then beat three, three E and uh, again with the E and the uh being played there, three E and uh, four and, and it resolves there, a uh, four and at the end of the bar. So we get one and, two E and uh, three E, a four and one and two three and four and one and two e a three e a four and one e and we're into our first set of stabs there so you can hear it it's just basically two crash cymbals i suggest you play it on two crash cymbals if you have them one e you could have played it on one though it doesn't really matter and then for the final time bill starts to step the hi-hat we've had the whole intro before this but the final time we step the hi-hat he starts on beat two after the two stabs one E, two and three, and it's just simply stepping on eighth notes. And then in the third bar, we get this signature little open hi-hat bark, which you hear throughout the beginning of the song, occurring on the E of beat three. One and two and three E and, three E and. So it's just in between the stepped hi-hat, three E and, three E and, three E and there, on the E of beat three. Hit it with the stick, it doesn't really matter. So we get one and two and three E and four and. And then we go on to the second line, where really the drum solo sort of starts, the, the drum, uh, most of the drum fills occur. We get one E and, for the first beat, we're on the second line now. And then the rest of the drum fill, for beat two, we get two E and er. Uh. So again, he likes, Bill likes to play these E's and er's. Uh. I like to think of them as the upbeat 16th notes. Not one and, but the notes in between, the E and the er, uh, the upbeat 16th notes. So we get two E and er, uh, and that's the sticking I suggest you use. Right, left, left. Beat three is rested, although on the recording you almost hear something, so it could be a ghosted snare drum being played there. I think he's playing two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, but it could be two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, with the three being tapped as a ghost note, three E and a. Uh. But it just makes it a little bit more complicated, it's not really important, it's not really heard, heard or felt, but if you want to sort of think about including that note there, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a. Uh. I'm sort of filling in the gaps there with the quiet ghost notes. Just for, the, for the more advanced drummers out there, if you want to fill in those gaps with ghost notes, just make sure you hit those, those main notes loudly. Two E and uh, three E and uh, and it then rolls into four E and uh. And Bill does this a lot in the song as well. He uses the bass drum foot as the end of a little lick in order to get him into beat one of the next bar. Four E and uh, four E and a uh, one. So we have to get two bass drums in a row because we're going to go into a crash on beat one. Four E and a uh, one. So we get 
two, uh, sorry, the whole bar. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. And I'll play this all up to speed again in a moment. The next bar, we get these crashes on beats one and two with the bass drum and snare drum playing one E and a two E and a three. One E and a two E and a three. Um, and what's interesting here on the recording is um, there's something being played there on beat three, a symbol effect of some sort, but it's so quiet, um, it can't really be a crash symbol, it can't be a, be a right symbol. So I think he's playing it on the hi-hat. I think he's playing beat three on the hi-hat here and um, there. It's very hard to hear. You could, of course, just leave out beat three and just come in with this first set of triplets after beat three with the left hand. That makes it a little bit harder, of course, because you're having to skip over one 16th note triplet. But on the recording, I'm pretty sure I hear the hi-hat being played, so that's what I've done. You can just keep it on the crash symbol though for beat three or the ride symbol. I just wanted to make sure the transcription was accurate. But if you want to change it around and make it sound rockier, and if I was playing with my band, I wouldn't use the hi-hat there. I'd definitely stick to the crash on beat three. One, a two, a three, and i do something like that. But on the recording, I hear a three, and, and what we got there is 16th note triplets from beat three. 16th note triplets, we can fit six in a whole beat, or three in half a beat. So we're counting six notes, three to ta and ta ta. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it starts with the bass drum and hi-hat. Boom, boom. Then it rolls into beat four, and I think he plays this. Four triplet, uh, or sorry, four to and, four to ta and. That's how you count it officially, 16th note triplets. Four to ta and, uh and a little sneaky bass drum there coming out of the triplet feel back into 16th notes, which is a bit weird to explain, but if I play it around a few times, you might hear how it sort of goes from the triplets back to 16ths again. So we get, for the whole bar, one, a two, a three to and a four to and a one. Four to and a one. One, a two, a three to and a four to and a one. Made a mistake there. There we go. So that's that little drum fill there. Lovely idea. That whole line, one E, two E, a three E, and a four E, and a one, a two, a three, and a four, and a one. Into the third line then, and we get this one A, uh, leading us into beat two, one E and A, uh, and we get two E and A, uh, again using that bass drum as a step to the next lick, Two E and a, uh, and then up to your high tom. Three E and a, uh, same idea again, same pattern, and then four E and a, uh, four E and a uh, one. In fact, to go over to the next bar, so we get one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a uh, one. One E and a, uh, two E, a uh, three E, a uh, four E and a uh, one. The next bar, one a uh, two. A three, another example of that very quiet symbol being used, and I think it's the hi-hat. Could be wrong about that. But again, you hear something being played on beat three, it's not loud, it's, it's not the crash or ride, it's something else, so I'm gonna use the hi-hat here. But if I was playing with my band, I'd definitely use the crash or ride for that beat three, as I've already said. One, a two, a three, E and a four, E and. It's kind of interesting, because if we get three, E and, uh, those E and, uh, the snare drum starts there on the E of three, three, E and, uh, Beat four is rested, so another sort of offbeat start for E and, for E and, going into the and the four there. One, a two, a three, E and, a four, E and. Three, E and, a four, E and. Four, e, uh, uh. You miss over beat four there, you skip over it. So, one, a two, a three, E and, a four, E and, like that. Talking too fast, running out of breath. Slow down. So the fourth line, we get um, my favourite lick from the song. It starts the same as we've had previously. One, uh, and then we get this pattern. Nothing to it really, but it's just really cool because we're playing 32nd notes here. They're twice the speed of 16th notes. 32nd notes are hard to count because they really haven't got their offic any official counting system. You play two of them for every one sixteenth note you count. One E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. So that lick there from beat two, two E and, sorry, two E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. Or, if you're practicing it, here it is, one E and a, two and, three E and a, four and, one E and a, two and. Lick that, uh, loop that round a few times, or lick that round a few times. I like that, lick that round a few times. I 
And what's important is you get that space between the last snare drum note and the bass drum. Don't play straight afterwards with the bass drum. There's a little gap there. So we get that um, three times. One, uh, two, E, and I can't really count it. It's hard to count two, E, and uh, for me for some reason. Lack of practice, probably. That's the whole bar. One, uh, two, three, four, one. And then just play it with a click. Mm -mm -mm. That's what it sounds like picked up to speed. Really nice, I love that. Very simple. So then the next bar is very similar to the second bar on the second line. It ends the same way, the same sort of lick. We get one, a two and, and you hear the right symbol being played there, two and, two and a three, goes into a crash this time, two and a three, and then we get that same triplet lick as we had before, three to ta and to ta, four to ta and, except instead of at the end, four to ta and, he plays four to ta and, very similar, but instead of right snare, it's right high tom. It's exactly the same apart from just that one snare drum difference there. So one, a two, and a three, and a four, so I missed it. One, a two, and a three, and a four, and a one. So then we go on to the last line, and this bar is quite tricky. We get one, a two, and a, uh, <laughs> that lick again. But then this time, from beat three, we get a whole beat's worth of 30 second notes. Eight of them fit in that space. Three E and a uh, four E and. And it's the timing there. You've got to be making sure that you understand where that right hand goes down to the floor tom is on the E of beat four. Three E and a uh, four E. Three E and a uh, four E. Three E and a uh, four E. So it takes the time, a little bit of practice to loop it around so you can get used to that. Four, uh, four E and then and a. Uh, three little notes at the end on the floor tom or your next lowest floor tom if you wanted to. So again, hard to count this. One, a uh, two E, and, so I really can't count it. Two E, one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. One, a uh, two E and a. Uh. I said I still can't do it. I'm embarrassing myself now on, on camera. That's how it's played. Do it slowly for you. Missed it. Messed it up. Out of time. Three and four. And that was it. And then you also, and I haven't included it on the chart just, just to make this a little bit easier for you guys out there, and myself as well, I guess, and it's not really important to the fill, no one's gonna really notice it, is you do hear a bass drum being played there by Bill, roughly around the uh of beat three, underneath those floor those high tom notes, or whatever tom you choose to play it on. Um, so you might, might wanna listen out for that, might wanna consider that. There is some bass drum stuff going on there, like he's playing the bass drum from the that lick, notice the bass drum falls on the er uh each time. It's like he's playing that again idea on the bass drum. You don't really hear it because it's underneath the toms being played. So then the final bar before we go into our groove is one, a two, a three. Stay up on the crash, they all ride, it doesn't matter. One, a two, a three. And we get very quiet on the mix. Three E, little bass drum there. Three E and a, uh, so like a linear style pattern. Three E and a, uh, four E and a uh, one. Four E and a one. That four is rested over again. One, a two, a three E and a four E and a one. So finally, and you've got the um, uh, uh, up to up to speed version already. Um, let's try and play the whole thing slowly, and I'm going to stop counting over the trickier bits. Let's see if I can do it in one go, sort of a medium sort of tempo. I count myself in. One and two and three and four and one and two E a three E a four and one E two and three and four and one and two and three E and four and one E two E a three E and a four E and a one a two a three and a four three and a four and a one. 
keep going. One, a two E, a three E, a four E, and a one, a two, a three E, and a four E, and one, a two, and uh, 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 a two, and a three. Takes a lot of breath. So that's the whole solo. Um, have fun with it. There's lots of cool little licks there to take out from it. You don't have to be able to learn this just for the sake of it. What I would do when I'm practicing stuff like this is I go, oh, that's a, that's a cool little lick. I remember that. Take it out and use it elsewhere in your playing. Um, that, that's a good way to learn new stuff is to take your favorite bits out, loop them around, change the orchestration, uh, and then try and play it with your own songs, other songs. Um, that way you sort of take something away from, from what you've learned. Um, don't forget to download the free PDF from my um, website. There's a link beneath this video, as I've already said. Come over to Facebook as well and say hi. That's also a great place to make song suggestions. This song was suggested over on my Facebook page by somebody. I, I forget their name. But um, it's been requested many times, and so I'm always happy to help people out on Facebook. If they've got some song suggestions that are famous and popular, very happy to, to transcribe or do a video lesson or something like that. Um, and then you might also want to consider signing up to become an online member at drumsaword.com. Don't forget to visit the website. So our next, until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.